Dear God, now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. But if I die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. Amen. For centuries we have taught children these simple verses. But do we ever think about what they mean? The child informs God it is time for sleep, then implores God to allow them to live through the night. And should they die in the night, the child asks God to care for their soul. Recent children's prayer books changed that second line to avoid children talking about their own death. The author, publisher, and copy editor had to agree to that change. It accepts the idea that death is too far removed from a child's life to be prayed for. Beginning in preschool these days, our children are taught how to avoid being murdered by a shooter that comes into the building. We train our children to expect to be killed and to learn how to survive an attack. Yet we are squeamish to hear them pray to God for his protection. Starting her freshman year of high school, when I would drop my daughter off at school, she always said she loved me, even if we'd been fighting. One day I thanked her for that, and she said, well, I know it may be the last time I see you. You know, if there's an attack at school, I may not make it out. On Tuesday, 19 children and two teachers were gunned down in an elementary school. The media is hyping the horror. There are vigils for the victims and fundraisers for the families. Elected officials and partisan advocates are on the airwaves debating regulations and accountability. And when I saw the first headline, I rolled my eyes and thought, I don't have time for this. I rolled my eyes and thought, I don't have time. And you should be appalled by that, because I certainly am. All the actions that I've been taking as a priest in this era of massacres seem so futile. What difference will this statement make in changing hearts to change our society? When the cause of the shooting is intentional human sin, will our prayers even help? Can a parish donation make an ounce of difference in the face of persistent and horrifying violence? Death interrupts life. It interrupts our life, and we must make time. Faith institutions are the only ones really equipped to grapple with death. Facing mortality and evil are the heart of why humans have religion at all. And when we roll our eyes and don't have time and simply accept this cycle of massacres with thoughts and prayers and lowering our flags and shouting matches over the Constitution, we just perpetuate the cycle. Usually I tell you to pray and not just do, but this time we need to stop and do something different demand that domestic violence crimes are treated with the same rigor as rape or theft or drug deals. Put the best interest of our children before the rights or desires of adults. Regulate ownership of tools that are designed to kill, like swords or explosives or guns to protect society. Fund mental health care and intervention in schools and in prisons. Admit that we are an inherently violent culture which works against the core principles of Christ. And pray. 
not for God's intercession, but for our resolve to do God's will. And instead of praying for our lives to be preserved through the night, pray this from St. Francis. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying to self that we are born to eternal life. <laughs>